Hey you guys, okay, so this is one of my very first recap panels for San Diego Comic-Con at Home 2020. This is Art and the Holocaust. So I'm gonna give you this just tiny intro here and then we're gonna get into my recap, which is just a voice recording of my immediate thoughts after watching the panel along with some screenshots from the actual uh, panel itself that I was watching on YouTube and I will include uh, links in the description box down below that I feel are relevant to this panel. I highly, highly, highly recommend this one. So basically this panel is bringing some light to comics, graphic representation and in propaganda and uh, post-Nazi or post-Nazi but post-World War II from survivors and from children of survivors and it was it was incredibly interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the rest of the videos. So I hope you guys watch and enjoy and um, check out the panel. Wow. I just watched the Art and the Holocaust panel and I don't really know what to say. That was incredible. I, I wasn't sure what it was going to be like going into it, but it was very, very enlightening. On the screen here, I'm going to be putting some screenshots from the panel that I took. I will also include links to important things that they talked about in the panel in the description box down below. I think some of the biggest things I learned, of course, is first from Miriam Caton, who is a was a child in the Holocaust, and she is a survivor. And the process she went through to write these two books that she did recapping her life and the amount of pain that it took to go through and the way that she drew her illustrations in black and gray because in white because that's how she sees it in her mind is incredible and you know, when her publishers are asking her to add color and she says she can't because that's not how she sees it. It's just, it's incredibly powerful. And I'm definitely going to put links to her books down below. I am really interested in getting them actually to be able to experience more about her, her story. I will talk about one of the most interesting things to me that I saw was from Esther Finder. She was discussing like Dr. Seuss's involvement in creating uh, propaganda, well not even propaganda, but just trying to influence the American audience about what was going on in World War II and that he was already doing this prior to the U.S.'s involvement in the war and that he was illustrating that we're putting our heads in the sand and that we weren't paying attention. And one thing I really liked about her is she highlighted some of his cartoons that actually are relevant to today, including things like social isolation and distancing yourself from current events and what's going on and just trying to hide from it. And I feel like in today's climate with everything that's going on, it's just super powerful to look at those images from the 40s and realize that somehow they're still relevant today, which I just, I think is just incredible. And then we had some other stuff from Matt Dunford, and I'll put these uh, images here. You know, to understand that Jack Kirby, of course I know who he is, We most of us do, I did not know that he was Jewish. I did not know that he had been a soldier in World War II. I didn't know any of that. And maybe that's something I should have known, but I didn't. And I'm sure a lot of people that are fans of Marvel and fans of his work know that. I also didn't know that Captain America was created before uh America's involvement in World War II and that's just incredible to me that he was willing to create that character and to start the influence of superheroes fighting the Nazis and you know wanting to be activists you know and, and I don't know just making that statement before we were even involved and then to know that he went to war and that he was on the front lines as a scout illustrating you know what he was seeing and then I think the most powerful thing for me is to know that he was one of the first Americans to see a concentration camp and that 
he illustrated it without realizing what it was is just incredible. I mean, I can't even imagine what that would even feel like or be like. And I also did appreciate that they brought up Walt Disney's involvement with the propaganda um, to educate people in the United States because I feel like the United States was just so distant from the war in a lot of ways that they it was easy for them to kind of hide and you know not not or think that it wasn't about them that they didn't have to have any involvement in it and that it would just go away and you know so I think that that's you know a good point to make is that a company like Walt Disney which in the 40s was basically broke and you know was but had had such an impact on the culture that they were taking on that role of you know using their tools to be able to I don't know help help with the war effort which I've always you know appreciated and I know a lot of people say that Walt Disney was an anti-Semite but that's not the case and many people who study Disney know that there's also some illustrations. I'm going to put this picture up here just to realize that there was so many Nazi supporters in the United States. And this image that they showed in the panel is Madison Square Garden and a pro-Nazi rally. And that just blows my mind. I mean, I knew it existed, but it's just crazy to me now to think that we had people here that were supporting the Nazi involvement. But then again, I think to today's culture and we have you know, we still have white supremacy and, you know, so I guess it's not that crazy, but at the same time, it's just like, wow, like, you know, what in the world, you know? So this panel is very, very enlightening. I, you know, I really found it informative. Um, if you get a chance, you should watch it. And I think the panels are staying up. So if they are, I'll put the link down below, but I think everybody would learn a whole lot from watching this particular panel and finding, you know, that what we experience today in our pop culture is heavily, heavily influenced by, of course, our past. And it's very important to pay attention to our past for those reasons. So that is my recap of the Art and the Holocaust panel from San Diego Comic-Con at Home 2020. Thanks for watching!